This weekend, Guy and I decided to go to Cloudland Canyon State Park. It's located on the western edge of Lookout Mountain. It's one of the largest and most scenic parks in the state. It is home to a thousand foot deep canyon, sandstone cliffs, wild caves, and waterfalls, dense woods, and an abundant wildlife. There are 16 cottages, 10 yurts, and a campground. We decided to stay in this lovely yurt. We loved it. We particularly liked this shot of the yurt uh, at night with a long exposure. We left at a painful 6 a.m. in the morning just pulling on our clothes from the previous day to go to sunrise. There are 30 miles of bike trails, 64 miles of hiking trails, 16 miles of horseback and riding trails, and 18 holes of disc golf. Good. For sunrise, we decided to go to the Overlook Trail, which is about a half a mile trail to go to Overlook number one. Overlook number two was overgrown, so Overlook number one was really the ideal place. When going to Cloudland State Park, you should be aware that the park rangers leave at 5 o'clock p.m. and you'll need to get there earlier uh, to be able to check in. As well, if you arrive after 10 p.m., you need to make sure that you get an access code from the ranger station so you can get into the park. We were shocked to be the only ones there, and it was an ideal place for sunrise and a time lapse. After sunrise, we decided to go to the Waterfalls Trail. It is a two mile round trip. It's fairly strenuous. It tends to be heavily trafficked, so I recommend getting there well before 10 o'clock in the morning. The Waterfalls Trail goes along the rim initially before descending down into the canyon. At about a half mile down, you get to a sign that points to the left to Cherokee Falls and to the right to Hemlock Falls. It is a half mile hike to Cherokee Falls and then a much steeper half mile hike to Hemlock Falls. Guy has started using his cotton carrier harness when going on hikes. It holds the camera securely and safely as you hike on rather uneven terrain. This trail is well developed with about 600 steps going down. The flow rate on these waterfalls tends to vary from week to week, but tends to be greater in the winter and early spring. Cherokee Falls was previously unnamed and was named in a naming contest. The fall drops about 60 feet and lands in a beautiful large blue pool. When shooting waterfalls, we always use a tripod to be able to manage the long time exposures required to get the soft water. One thing you should always remember when shooting a waterfall is to remember to look behind you whenever you see something beautiful in front of you. At a waterfall, often there are beautiful cascades just below the waterfall as well. This was true at this waterfall. Not surprisingly, the Waterfalls Trail is rated in the top 10 in hikes in Georgia. Hemlock Falls is 90 feet tall and drops down to a rocky cascade. There's a large boulder that obstructs the view from the viewing platform. If you want to get good pictures, you'll have to go off trail to be able to get a better line sight of the waterfall. Our strategies tend to be to attack the waterfall from all angles, the left side, the right side, the middle, as high as we can and as close to the water as we can shoot. The 
if you take the trail a little further downstream, there's another beautiful waterfall. It continues to be unnamed. Well, we decided that we hadn't had quite enough hiking, so we're gonna go try to hike Sitton's Gulch, which is not far from here. Let's go. Sitton's Gulch Trail follows along Daniel Creek and can be walked all the way to Hemlock and Cherokee Falls. We decided to turn around and come back before we got that far along the trail. All right, we haven't made it 50 feet on the trail and guys already decided this is a wonderful shot and it must be taken. He's right, it's gorgeous. Along the way, we passed a dry riverbed with gorgeous round boulders. They made an excellent foreground for the forest. We are particularly attracted to places in the trail where the trail ahead of us makes an S-curve. This is particularly pleasing for the eye. Our last day, we decided to hike the West Rim Loop Trail. It is a lollipop style hike with the first and the last mile of the hike covering the same section. It has a three mile loop in the middle, which gives you views of the canyon. We found the best place to start the West Rim Trail is near Yurt 6. We've come to the option in which direction to go in the Western Loop Rim Trail. Um, we're going to choose to go this way, so the, the, um, the inside, and come out along the outside of the canyon. Just because of the light and which way the sun's coming up so that we're not shooting into the light. It's been a gorgeous hike so far and we can't wait to keep going. We found that in order to get sharp pictures on hikes that we have to haul around a tripod with the dense tree coverage. The light is simply too dim to get sharp pictures without the tripod. We just finished the West Rim Loop Trail and our tips are, um, because of the views on this trail, it's a much better evening trail, at afternoon evening trail. We were shooting into the sun a lot trying to get the canyon. So afternoon is definitely better than in the morning. Again though, in terms of hiking it, our first person we saw was at 10 o'clock. So if you want to try not to run into so many people, go, before 10 o'clock. And the other thing is, is this was an easier trail. It was less frequented than the Waters Falls Trail. I think the Water Falls Trail was more fun in many ways. This was a beautiful trail and the best section of it, I think, is just beyond the yurts 
uh, on this section, there are some beautiful boulders and rocks here that were stunning that we enjoyed shooting at all the contours of. I hope that's helpful. Well, um, we've been uh, um, five hours hiking on the Western Limp Rim Loop Trail and um, I gotta go pee. Bye. Oh. <laughs>